have you seen him who has taken as his God his own vain or carnal desire? Brothers and sisters, I was asked to speak about, about the nafs in relation to ego and passions. And I had to do a little bit of research to look at the philosophy of things and then compare that to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. But before I delve into that, I just want to know from a show of hands, when you hear the word nafs, how many of you feel that there is a positive connotation? Okay, how many of you feel the negative connotation? Okay, everyone pretty much unanimously, when you hear nafs, you feel that it's something that's negative. So the scholars, the way that they explain, and it's an abstract concept, so the way that they try to explain what this nafs is, and there's another word that sometimes people think about that word also, which is ruh, or spirit. And the way the scholars try to reconcile and explain these abstract concepts is they said at the middle is the kalb, or the, the heart. And on one side, if you think about it like a Venn diagram that overlaps, one side is the ruh, which ties you to the ghayb, or the unseen. And the other side is the nafs, which tethers you to what? To the dunya, to this, to this world, to our existence. So if we think about the word that's used, and we use it in English as well, we call it the self, right? So it's the self because it's like our self. It's our existence in this plane, in this world. So sometimes it's hard to think about us and our paradigm in a spiritual way. I was just talking to a group of 10-year-olds in a session, and I had to ask them, what is the center of the human body, right? And if you just look at it in a material way, you might say, maybe it's the stomach. But Islamically, what is the center of our body? It is the heart. And what is the heart? Is it, is it the physical heart? Is it the flesh? Is it the, the ventricles and all that meaty stuff, right? No, it's our spiritual heart, which is at our core and, our, and at our center. With that being said, let's explore some of the ayahs in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the nafs. The one I think that everyone thinks of is nafs al or what's called the commanding self. In Surah Yusuf, the wife of the Aziz, what did she say? She said, I, I don't say that I'm not to blame. Indeed, the soul, or the, in this case, the nafs, is a persistent enjoiner of evil, except for those upon which my Lord has mercy. Indeed, my Lord is forgiving and merciful. So she said, yes, my commanding self attracted me towards Yusuf and I lost control. And she said, I'm, it's not that I'm not blameworthy. So what she had given into was her commanding self. And that commanding self, this is what we think about, think about right, when we hear nafs. And I call it the cheese ball nafs. <laughs> How many of you have a membership at Costco or BJ's? Okay. Have you ever in your life bought the big tub of cheese balls? It's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and you should be horrified at the, at the prospect that, that you've done that, right? But if you, if you think about it, we've all done it, right? Many of most of us. I see Brother Sajjad saying no, but I'm sure it's come in your house. <laughs> so what happens is, what happens when we buy that, that thing of cheese balls, right? Let's say, okay, fine, we had that, that feeling like I really want, I just feel like having cheese balls, or I saw it, the packaging or something about it, the fake orange, yellow, whatever it is. It just, I don't know, it just said like, I, I need to have that, okay? 
how many of you only had the serving size? Which is maybe like four or six or eight? Not even eight is enough, right? So what happens? Just keep eating it, keep eating it, keep eating it, without processing like what am I doing, right? By the time you get to halfway through or less, you're like, wait, I just ate half of these, the kids didn't even get any. <laughs> Right? And, and you're, and you're, and how do you feel? Do you feel good? Like, yeah, I did that. Nobody feels good. You feel absolutely disgusted with yourself, as you should have when you're making that decision. But that is the nafs. So, nafs and is the cheese ball nafs. Right? And now you're never going to forget it. Right? And that's really the dunya. And if you want to understand how we're being advertised to, right? Just watch a sports game and look at the commercials. What, what kind of things are they trying to sell you? Right? Especially these days, one of the big ones is gambling. Before it used to be just alcohol, right? A lot of alcohol ads constantly. And then you might have some car, you know, other materialistic things like, okay, you want this car? Okay. Right? We can understand alcohol now, of course, that alcohol is gonna expand to other things like marijuana and other stuff. Okay, we can even understand that. But now gambling is being pushed extremely hard, right? You see Draft Kings, right? Or what are some of the other ones? There's so many of them, sports book, this and that. You might not even know if you're not aware of some of these things are. When you see those commercials, ask your kids, what are these things? And some of you may not know, many of our youth are actually getting an entryway into gambling by downloading these apps. And what they do is they give you an initial free game. They do something, you might hear words like parlay, right? Like they're, they're guessing what might happen in a sports game and they're gambling on it. And Las Vegas, they set the casinos, they set the overs and the unders. You might have heard these phrases while you're watching the game or your kids are watching. But what's happening is the kids are being trained that this is, what, this is the thing you're supposed to do. Now in the sports shows, they, they talk about those things, which never was talked about before. It was like a dirty thing. Like They might talk about it on maybe like a separate podcast or something. Now they're talking about it openly. And now it's in the advertisements, and now it's all over the place. So that is a part of the nafs also. It's the, I want more. I want more. Shohei Otani. Los Angeles Dodgers, he signed the, one of the largest contracts that I think is the largest contract in MLB history. And immediately what happens next is he's in a scandal where he throws his translator under the bus and he says, oh, he was, uh, he, it was a gambling addiction that he had. And he said, no, it wasn't me, it was the translator. So now you have the, some of the, you know, the largest contract out of all these millionaires hundreds of millions of dollars, and that's not enough. It's like, now I need to, I need to gamble, I need to seek, I need to thrill seek by, by doing this thing. And you see it on the first of the month. You know, if you're from where I'm from, Brooklyn, first of the month, everyone lines up where? Liquor store. Liquor and lotto, first of the month. And I remember one time, I saw an old person, he was at the grocery store, he bought his groceries, took his change, went straight to a vending machine which had lotto in it. And I'm like, what are you doing? I was like, this is your hard earned money. And he goes, but I might win, right? So it's that delusion of dunya that keeps pulling you, like I want more, I want more, I want more. And Muslims, you know, we have to understand that in this society, this is a very nafsi society in, in this sense of the, the nafs where the world is trying to, to uh, trap you into obeying your commanding self, right? And a scholar explained that your society, it's not, this is not just an individual thing, because when we think of nafs, we think of it as an individual thing. It's actually the framework of your society. If you think about the worth of society, what do we measure things by? GDP, what is that, right? How much are we consuming? How much are we, we spending? There's other countries that measure growth by other, other factors. But in America, they talk about, well, people are spending again, that means the economy is good. So just something to, to think about how the society is aligning itself. 
I'll move on to the, the second type of nafs, nafs al lawama the self-reproaching self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I swear by the self-reproaching soul, right? This is the struggle that every single Muslim has every single day, where we have to deliberate and negotiate our actions, where we take our morals and our sense of understanding and morality, and then we take our desires and even our actions, our daily actions, and we have to counterweigh them against each other and make decisions, right? And this is something that a Muslim is, is doing uh, every single day. And the third one is nafs mutmainna, the tranquil self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, rest assured soul, return to your Lord well pleased and pleasing to him and enter among my righteous servants and enter my paradise. This is like the ultimate goal or pinnacle where we want our nafs to be, where our nafs is just fully aligned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's at the point where Allah is ready to receive us and put us directly into, into Jannah. Now in, in philosophy, you guys in school may have studied about the id, the ego, and the superego. And if you compare these things, right, the, the Freudian model, it's a, it's a type of a study of philosophy of human behavior to look at how are people going to do things and how do they think, how do they act. And the goals, if there's positive outcomes, it's altruism for the sake of altruism. But in the Islamic model, it's about spiritual development. And it's a dimension that's self-correcting and guiding because we have a destination. We're trying to get somewhere. And if you look at this entire convention and you think about it and you look at some of the topics and all the tracks that Brother Castro was talking about, tracks, these are all designed to help us realign. Realign our nafs to this directionality in life because we have an ultimate purpose in where we're trying to get to. So we don't follow our base desires, right? What they call the, the, the cattle self, right? Which is like cattle, what, like what do cattle do? They eat, they sleep, they drink, and they reproduce, right? We have a higher purpose. Even talking with the kids today, we're talking about like, what did Allah SWT give us? He gave us, we talked about the qalb, we talked about the akal, right? And then he gave us guidance with that so that we can apply our, our akal and our, our kalb and that we can align ourselves in that direction. And that's the whole purpose. That's why we're here. And you know, to, to commend all of you for coming here and bringing your, your families here, all of the guidance that, that you need or the reminders or just what you need to get realigned or, or to refocus, both individually, yes, but also as a family and as a society, you should synthesize all the information that you're taking in and say, how are we going to change things? How are we going to align so that when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can truly say that we, we surely followed the, the, this, this ayah of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa ma yahya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Surely say, Surely my prayer, all my acts of worship, and my living and my dying are for Allah alone, the Lord of the whole universe. Zakal khair.